So we have with us today Professor Madhvi Srinivasan, who is the Executive Director, Sustainability Office, Nanyang Technology University, Singapore. Professor Srinivasan, thank you very much for taking out the time and joining us today. Thanks, Mayank, for this opportunity. So you know you've been uh, taking care of you know sustainability at uh, NTU and uh, you know automotive industry is right now I think one of the key aspects that has become important for the industry you know is sustainability you know we are seeing companies looking at SDG and ESG goals which have become sort of very critical for you know all the companies not just in India but this is like I'm talking about the global scenario right now. So if you talk about, you know, automotive, so what do you think, you know, is the road ahead? If we talk from a broader sense, you know, what is the road ahead for the transportation industry from where we are today? Uh, thanks, Maya. I, I think uh, when you talk about broadly sustainability, right, uh, many of them are zooming into the automotive industry, uh, uh, especially uh, because of the carbon footprint of this entire industry. And uh, electrification, of course, has been the way to go. Uh, as we can see worldwide, uh, people are uh, moving from uh, uh, ICE-based to battery-based uh, vehicles. And I would say in the last uh, few years, I would say that this electrification EVs uh, has really exponentially increased worldwide. And even in India, I think in terms of infrastructure, in terms of awareness of EV, uh, I would say that it has increased a lot uh, in India. Uh, so broadly, uh, electrification, I definitely believe, is the way to go uh, if you want to lower the carbon footprint. Moving ahead, a bit futuristically, if you look at people are talking about electrification of aircraft, aircrafts also, uh, uh, because, you know, the carbon footprint of a of, of, of flight is a is lot more. Uh, so people are talking about that. So I, I would say that after solar panel installation, when you talk about sustainability, that's a widespread uh, thing happening from floating solars to building solars. Electrification of vehicles is the next big thing uh, that's happening. And it's, it's the promising direction to reduce carbon footprint. Right. But on that, you know, I also want to understand from you, Professor Srinivasan, that, you know, you mentioned that electrification is the way forward. But, you know, we also have to look at it from a well to wheel perspective. Yeah. From that angle, do you still believe that electrification is the right answer to our problems right now? And do you think electric technology is the cleanest solution for mobility? Um, so, Mayank, your, your question is absolutely right, right? As today, if, if you do a comparison from well to wheel of an ICE versus an EV, right, uh, the numbers don't tally up. Uh, it's because there is a critical link people have not closed when it comes to electrification, which is the recycling of e-waste. This is something that I lead a center in Singapore, which is on recycling of electronic waste. Very, very specifically, we look at recycling of lithium-ion batteries. So there has been studies which says that you're right. If you use batteries, you electrify and then throw them and keep on mining and doing your carbon footprint in your mining and making the batteries maybe doesn't add up to your overall sustainability. But if we are able to close the link to say that if you are able to recycle the batteries, and we have shown that in our research that from old batteries, it is possible to extract elements and put it back into new batteries, then the carbon footprint and economics makes, makes much more sense. So we call this closed loop recycling of lithium ion batteries, or we call it closing the loop of the EV. Uh, this link today, Mayank, is not very well understood. Uh, this is still at a research infancy, and this needs to make sense such that, you know, we really make a big dent in our carbon footprint reduction using EVs. So how much of, you know, these elements, once you recycle these lithium ion batteries, so how much of the elements can be reused going forward? If you can just explain that uh, thing to us. Uh, so, so we have shown that practically greater than 95% of elements are recoverable and we can also recycle them. So in my lab, what we have done is we have collected EV batteries, uh, crushed them, extracted uh, elements, critical elements. So we call it an urban mine uh, rather than classical mine. And one more thing, Mayank, I want to highlight, right? It is found that the concentration of these elements in, I'll focus on batteries or electronic waste, is a lot more than what's in the mine. 
So it makes economic sense. So today we have shown that greater than 95% can be recovered and reused back into batteries. The research gap I'm trying still to close is the performance of these new batteries that we have made from recycled elements, right? So we recycle the elements, make new electrodes, put it back. The initial performance capacity is as good as a commercial battery. But then the charging, discharging, you know, we go through 1,000 to 3,000 cycles. Today, these batteries can only cycle for maximum 100 cycles. Uh, because there are other impurities in the recycling process which is coming in and that is what we are trying to address to close the loop. So from 100 to 3000, it's a huge gap. So will you be able to, uh, you know, address this gap? Will you be able to close this gap for, uh, going forward with your research? Yeah, we are, we are a lot positive that we can close the gap, Mayank. And I'll tell you why we are so positive, right? Uh, we started this e-waste recycling uh, center about uh, four or five years ago. At that point, the question from the industry is, do you think even a recycled material would work as a battery? Uh, today, I can say, yes, it works. You know, So I think now that we have answered that, uh, we sort of understand what is the problem, that it's just the impurities that is coming in. And we are positive that we can close the gap. Uh, and my lab has been working in re recycling, but just materials for lithium ion batteries. So we sort of understand the materials and uh, I mean, that that's really my hope and vision uh, towards closing this loop. We are right. optimistic. <laughs> right. <clears throat> right. So these are what these are LFP batteries. These are NMC cell chemistry. So what chemistries are you working on right now? Uh, you mean for the recycling or for the, for yeah. the battery materials? For the recycling, uh, the batteries that you're recycling, you're extracting yeah. the materials out. So these are what the lithium iron phosphate batteries or the NMC batteries? So these are mixtures, Mayank, and I think that's where it gets interesting, right? Mm -hmm. The battery, I think you, you would know it better than me, right? The battery value chain is such that uh, the final battery that goes into EV, right? The chemical composition of that is not very well known uh, to the EV makers or to the consumers. So the, what we are working on is a concoction of mixed batteries, LFP, NMC, LCO. Literally, we are trying to extract things from a concoction. Uh, so to answer your question, all batteries are LFP based, NMC based, LCO, mainly from mobile portable electronics has always been LCO based, based batteries. Okay. And in terms of, you know, the energy consumption also, so while you're recycling a battery, so I believe there would be energy consumption in that process as well. So yep. how do you factor that in when you talk about overall sustainability of, you know, of an EV? Yeah, man. Thanks. So... Uh, the traditional, so one of the focus of our research is to have least energy consuming. Uh, the, the novelty of uh, my team's research is conventional research of recycling is energy intensive. If you see the plants worldwide, they are still consume a lot of energy. And again, the economics and the carbon footprint might not make sense when you go down and do the numbers. So the technologies we are developing, and when I say we are able to extract 90%, right? These are room temperature based, solvent based technology. That means you don't need to give additional energy at all. Uh, maximum temperatures we are talking about is maybe 100 degrees as compared to 1000 degrees, which is the current process. And the water that we are using can be recycled back to the process. Yeah. So then in terms of the overall process, you're saying that it's a lot uh, better, a lot environment friendly compared to what is conventionally being done. It's totally environmental friendly. And if I can go uh, into a bit more of details, right? Yeah, uh, I said we can extract the elements. Uh, so today, uh, the, the, the technology, what is out there is called pyrometallurgy. It means you heat everything at high temperature, everything melts like a metallurgy process. And then it's very energy in intensive and cost intensive. The second process people are adopting is called hydrometallurgy, where they use strong acids, aquaregia. Everything dissolves, you know, basic chemistry, and then you try to extract. The way we do it is, my concept is waste to treat waste. So we used one stream of waste to extract elements. So we have used fruit peel waste, specifically orange peels, uh, which have acidity in them. Uh, why fruit peel? In, in, in Singapore, we have a problem of food waste. Food wastage is, you know, rarely people cook in the house. The, the, the thing is, you go to a food court, buy food. Food waste is one of the streams people were trying to tackle. So our process is we use orange peels. 
uh, which provides acidity. We mix them with the battery waste. That itself does the job. We are able to extract 90%. What we get in the end is just, you know, like a carbon black mass, okay. uh, which can be used as a fertilizer or a manure. So en entirely an environmental friendly process is what we work on. Right. So do you think that this sort of an, you know, do you, do you feel that the application of this particular process when it, it evolves and when it becomes more mature going forward? Uh, so do you think the application would be relevant in emerging markets like India as well, who are like heavily reliant on food and, you know, maybe Brazil, you know, and India, such emerging markets. Uh, do you see the, uh, see the possibility of that happening going forward? Yeah, yeah, I, I think so, Mayank. I think for, for these processes, right, combining two different way streams, uh, definitely, I think this will be become a reality. And one of the reasons why I say that, right, uh, in my interaction with a lot of uh, recycling companies, uh, one of the things is they don't want to add something new to recover waste. You know, it has to be a very low economy process, but a high value, you know, that can provide. Uh, and hence, if you talk about adding new chemicals and more and more new things to extract elements, right, the economics won't make sense. And that was the reason why we started looking at waste streams, right, because waste streams, you, you, you try to upcycle both streams. Um, and, and you mentioned India, right, definitely, you know, India is a market where, as you said, right, there, there's, there's a waste stage, the volume is there as compared to a country like Singapore, right, the volume is a lot more. In, in India and setting up plants, the land space is there. So the hope is such technology could come to reality such that you really have an environmentally friendly process with the lowest carbon footprint. And in terms of the overall cost of such a setup, so if you compare it to, an, to a conventional recycling unit, so you know how lower the cost is for setting up such a, uh, you know establishment uh, for recycling a battery. So, so we are doing some life cycle cost analysis now, Mayank. So we are working with a recycling company where we are setting up a one ton uh, reactor per day to do some economics. But some initial estimates says that, right, uh, the cost reduction can be anywhere between 20 to even 50 percent to 60 percent because the infrastructure needed for such things, right, is, is very, very minimal. Uh, you, you don't need like a huge furnace, you don't need a cooling system, you don't need a lot of capex, you know, to put in first. It's more the opex. And in terms of uh, overall efficiency, uh, Professor Srinivasan, so you, you are able to match up with what, you know, conventional recycling units are able to, uh, you know, achieve. Absolutely, absolutely. So we are on par with extracting efficiency. Conventionally, what people are, and we have gone one step further. Mm -hmm. Conventionally, people extract lithium cobalt and sell them as metals. Uh, we really want to put them back into batteries. So we have shown that you can even make a uh, raw material uh, for specific battery application uh, and then put it back into battery. And you're targeting vehicle batteries. You're not just targeting storage batteries for power storage and, you know, such applications. Uh, so today we are looking at EV batteries, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but our process can be extrapolated to, you know, uh, stationary energy storage batteries also. Uh, our, our process is agnostic. I think uh, it's it's battery specific and chemi uh, battery chemistry specific. On that note, we'll end this conversation here. It was lovely talking to you, Professor Srinivasan, and, you know, a lot of uh, knowledge, you know, from this uh, conversation. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mayan. Very nice to talk to you. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you.